The first thing that we try to do when we get these cases ready to fit to the socketed model is see if we can get the prosthesis to fit without removing a lot of bone. We want to try to uh, relieve some of the area on the prosthetic or the teeth or pontic areas that uh, we can without ruining the uh, bridge itself so that you, you, you don't have to remove more bone than you need to. We know we have to make room for the, for the teeth themselves in the sockets, but you know, as little as we have to do to preserve bone is good. So right away on this case, I see that in this area on the molar, that's a pontic section. So I'm, I'm going to have to uh, make an ovate pontic down to, uh, you know, like a millimeter or two. And uh, at that point, if it still doesn't go down, I'm going to relieve the intaglio side of the uh, pontic itself. The, the next step is that we put the, um, the scallop guide in place on the fixation base and we use a round burr. We call it a BB burr. It's almost a quarter of an inch in diameter. And we take and relieve the actual uh, pontic section on the bone to create an ovate area for the pontic to sit. So the gums will, will form over that, but when it comes time to put the bridge in, you'll have an ovation there that you can set the pontic down into. Now we, we, uh, we relieve this to the, the, the outline of the footprint of the tooth that you can see here in the metal. This has been made to the prosthetic that we've created. The pontic section on the bridge is not the culprit the area that's holding this from seating. It's the tooth in front of it, the premolar. Uh, the prosthesis itself hits the bone before it seats. And also on the lingual side, we have some interference uh, on the lingual of the socket. So we're gonna attack some of those areas on the prosthetic first to see if that solves the problem. And it, it usually won't, but it'll at least allow us not to have to reduce so much bone. I'm now going to relieve within the uh, scallop guide, the bone uh, to the footprint of the tooth itself that we've created in the prosthetic. Now in the prosthetic, we have to make these teeth a little, sometimes a little thicker than they need to be, simply to be able to be printed in our process, our, our printing process. Uh, because the material has to have a certain amount of thickness to be to have a successful print. Okay, I have relieved uh, the pontic section. I've also relieved the uh, socketed area in the premolar, the first pre second premolar, or first premolar, I'm sorry, and that is free. But what we have to look at now, there's a pontic section here that is still hitting, and you can see the pivot right under this tooth. So I'm gonna now take and make an ovate area in that, that, that site. Okay, right now I'm going to mark the areas that we relieved uh, on the model itself, on the bone model, so that you'll know where we actually did work. And most of the time you're gonna see that that area follows the footprint of the, the prosthetic tooth that we're replacing in the bone, okay? So now the pontic site that I showed you that uh, uh, had a little interference, I'm gonna go and make an ovation in the bone. Okay. Site of the ovate pontic here, we, it's down now, the, the, the bridge is seated on this right side, right here. Oh, and underneath. Okay, there. and I'm gonna make about two millimeters of space between the pontic and the bone for soft tissue so that when this bridge is seated, it'll have positive pressure on the tissue to form an ovate pontic uh, when we go to do the final prosthetic. Okay, so now I'm gonna adjust a little bit on the, the um, ridge lap of the pontic just to make room for some soft tissue between the ovated area that we made, we formed, and the bone. So that there it ends up with a little ovate depression in the tissue when we make the final restoration. The right side of the prosthetic is now seated properly uh, into the uh, fixation base. You can see in the box areas where the Swiss locks are, that those are flush. We can push the pins in and do pickups. The patient's right side is now seated uh, and we're moving anteriorly. And in the number seven and eight area, I can see that the, pont the teeth themselves on the prosthetic are touching bone. So 
I'm going to go in and relieve the prosthetic where I can and then go and relieve the bone the rest of the way to get these areas cleared and uh, open for seating. There are areas on the prosthetic that we can do a little shaping on where it's a little bit heavy, not much, but down where this fits into the bone, I'm going to taper a little bit around the neck of the teeth, the lingual here, just to make sure that you know we're going to save as much bone as we can when we adjust to get the rest of it seated. The embrasure areas can be opened up to allow the interceptal bone to stay intact as much as possible to help hold you know papillas we want to try to keep papillas if we can but we also have to consider strength so there will be times when you can only take thin this out so much and you have to then reduce some bone to allow the prosthetic to fit down the prosthetic in on this uh, patient's right side in this uh, seven and eight area has been adjusted to where we need it to be and I'm going to go now and open up the, the footprint of the bone where these teeth fit and at this point hopefully the uh, prosthetic will seed into place in these areas now it might be holding up on the left side of the patient's left side of the arch and we're going to have to go in there and relieve some of that before everything goes down in place. Without the uh, guy, the uh, scallop guy in place, I'm checking for fit. There's a few little corners we might have to adjust just to allow this prosthetic to go down in place. After adjustment, I put the prosthetic in place and I find that there's no more interferences there. And when I turn the prosthetic around, I can see that all the uh, box inserts here are seated down against the fixation base, which means that that we're down. That means that uh, enough bone reduction has been done to allow seating. A little bit more on the patient's left, you can see that that will go down, but it has a little bounce, so we're very close. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a little bounce on this side. This sprue strut does not fit down exactly without a bounce, so we're hitting someplace. I just have to find it and relieve it so that we're free. I think the area that we're looking at is right here on the uh, mesial uh, gingival area of the uh, canine. So I'm going to relieve this area uh, uh, and, and see if that is where we're hanging up. I'm relieving the uh, area in the canine, the, the number 11 area, taking away the bone that I think is interfering with feeding that tooth and it's usually towards the gingival. I'm also going to go to the next area, which is a pontic, and create my ovate site for the pontic itself. The prosthesis now fits. I am, however, going to use this guide to just open up the top of the bone, you know, at the crest, uh, to the footprint of the prosthetic tooth itself, which isn't going to be a lot of work right here. Again, I'm trying to leave as much interceptal bone as possible. And that's that. I mean, that's the end of what we have to do. The prosthetic does fit down. Looking closely, you can see that the spruce that and the, the boxes that attach into the locking mechanisms are flush with the fixation base and everything is down. We, do, we have no rock from one side to the other. Uh, and we're ready to uh, pick up cylinders.